so it can be confusing. Gender really takes on a lot of different meanings for a lot of people, so it can be confusing. My name is Kara Tannenbaum and I'm the Scientific Director of the Institute of Gender and Health for the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. That's the Canadian government's national funding organization for health research in Canada. The Institute of Gender and Health, our mandate is really to produce knowledge on the influence that sex and gender have on health and disease and then help apply the findings to improve the health of men, boys, girls, women and gender diverse people. Canada has its GBA Plus policy, Gender Based Analysis Plus. What a lot of people don't know is that within the, the health portfolio, we actually call it SGBA Plus. And we differentiate the sex and gender based analysis part of it. And in, in biomedicine, medicine, health sciences, there's a huge difference between sex and gender. When we talk about sex, we talk about the biological factors that make us who we are. So these are our genes, our anatomy, our physiology, sex hormones, that's all related to sex. So whether I'm genetically XX for female, XY for male, something in between for intersex, that's all sex biological factors. Um, when we talk about gender, it is a lot more complicated. Gender has many different dimensions. We could talk about gender roles and gender norms. So we could talk about occupations being gendered, you know, how women typically become nurses, and we usually see men more in physics. It doesn't mean that based on their biologic sex, one is better for the job than somebody else, but because of society's expectation of what men and women should or could be doing, then that would be a gender norm or a gender role. Caregiving is typically female. You know, historically, the man was thought that they had to be the breadwinner. But today, we know that gender is not really um, disaggregated by sex, what men and women should typically do. In fact, we know that there are many biologically female individuals who take on more of a assertive, um, breadwinning, typically maybe male gender role, although in this day and age we have our stay-at-home dads taking on the stereotypical female role. So that's why we talk about gender in terms of gender roles and gender norms. Then there's a whole other component of gender, which is gender identity. And gender identity is how we self-identify. Whether we feel inside more masculine, more feminine, um, it depends on the situation, how I feel, you know, in the middle, neither, both. We've heard the word transgender. Those are people who are identified by their biological sex as, let's say, female when they're born. So what was the sex assigned at birth? But as they grow into themselves, they realize that they feel more male. So they self-identify as male. So it's trans because the way they feel doesn't match the sex they were assigned at birth. We call people cisgender if they feel inside the way they self-identify as male-female um, according to the sex they were assigned at birth. And then there's the third sort of component of gender, which is more gender relations. And that's about the power dynamics, about the institutionalization and hierarchy in the workplace, or the power dynamics at home, or, or by the media. So you know, the typical woman who needs to be skinny and pretty, and you know, the, the model who walks down the runway, that's not what women look like at all. But we get the message from the media that that's the way a beautiful woman should look. So that's an institutionalized um, kind of perception of gender and has to do with gender relations and the way that plays out, which is different based on country, context, where you live, what generation you're in, if you're in Canada, gender, in a developing country. Really gender really takes on a lot of people. So it can be. So it can be confusing. So it can be confusing.